Welcome back to another episode of Detroit 360, your personal guide to all things Detroit. I'm your host, Sheila Grant. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I didn't even see you there. Don't mind me. I'm just getting ready for my appearance in the upcoming Thanksgiving Day Parade. There's something so magical about seeing those floats just gliding down Woodward Avenue. You know, ever since I was a little girl, I have loved coming down and watching the Thanksgiving Day Parade. And being an adult is no different. There's just something so Detroit about it all. Have you ever wondered, though, about what goes on to get things ready for the parade each year? Well, our very own Joe Darby goes behind the scenes at the Detroit Parade Company in this next episode of Motor City Passport. <laughs> For the past 87 years, America's Thanksgiving Parade has been iconic in the city of Detroit. From floats to dancers, reindeers, and countless visits from St. Nick himself. Each year lays a new brick of holiday memories in the building of the Detroit Thanksgiving tradition. Hello, boys and girls. Have you all been good? <laughs> it's wonderful to see you again. Each year, I get to keep the city to distinguished guests. Today, it's my great pleasure to give you the nicest key of all, the key to the hearts of boys and girls. They know that Santa's on his way. He's loaded lots of toys and goodies on his sleigh. And every mother's child is going to spy. America's Thanksgiving Parade presented by Art Van. You may be familiar with it. Well, right now, I'm standing in an iconic doorstep. This right here is Santa's workshop. Usually, at every Thanksgiving Day Parade, Santa receives a key from the mayor of Detroit. Let's check out how exactly all of this is put together and why you should come and visit the parade company. Well, the, the Parade Company is a nonprofit that is set up to bring these amazing free events to the city of Detroit. Included in that, of course, are the Target Fireworks and America's Thanksgiving Parade. Target Fireworks are so important to our region. We bring people together, uh, almost a million people in the city of Detroit, enjoying this, we'll call it summer celebration. It's important as we ask people to live work and play in Detroit, that we have these amazing events that really uh, identify the fabric of Detroit. Without these events, uh, it'd, be, it'd be a sad moment because major cities like Detroit need to bring people together, need to show people that we can handle and put on great things for them. Three giant uh, red clown noses, a pair of giant clown shoes, one, two, three, Four giant clown hats. My name's Dave Danielson. I'm the art director of the Parade Company. I oversee pretty much everything we produce here at the Parade Company as far as building, uh, floats, props, um, displays, whatever we do. Right now, uh, we're in the, the heat of our float building season, getting ready for the Thanksgiving Parade. <laughs> How's it going? Fine. Good. Um, Eric thinks that I should put tail lights on the back of him. Uh, or insinuate that there are taillights yeah, in the back of him. Well, let's see what he looks like. I would worry... I, mean, I don't think you have to worry about the taillights. I don't think so, so either. I think we'd paint them on. 
Um, next year, though, you're going to have to start on your, yeah. your seats. Okay. okay. Should I so. uh, sculpt his pupils onto here? Mm. Or go that, is that just another paint thing? I would round these round these off a bit and maybe put like a little like eyebrow on there. Okay. Do you know what I'm saying? Just do like a little indent. Mm -hmm. And then stick that on there. Maybe round them off so they look a little bit more eyeball-y. What are they building? Uh, they're putting uh, chicken wire on what this is called rod sculpture. Okay. It's basically when we have like uh, organic shapes or so stuff that's too large to, to carve out of styrofoam. Uh -huh. we, we rod sculpt it, which means we take this pencil rod and we weld like a mesh frame together, like kind of like you'd see on a three dimensional design on a computer. Okay. And then they're putting chicken wire on it and we cover that. It kind of finishes everything off so that we can glue it. Is this the front of it? Or These are the sides. This oh, particular sides. float has to travel to Grand Rapids, so nice. it breaks down in order to be small enough to fit into a semi truck. We, wow. If we put them up on the, can we put them up on these? And it'll be a these nice guys fight. are all volunteers from Ford Motor Company. Wow. And they do this every year, so they're they're pros. I don't really have to, I don't really have to do tell them to do much. I'm um, gonna we'll take a look at the big heads, which are part of the big head core. They are actually the oldest thing in the parade. Um, they, some of them date back to the 1930s, 1940s from Viraggio, Italy. Um, and they were, you can walk this way. Um, they are all done now in-house here. But back in the early days, they were sent over from Italy when Hudson's ran the parade. Um, Viraggio is the paper mache capital of the world. And they have a great big Mardi Gras party every year. Um, the carnival, so to speak. And their tradition is to throw these heads away, burn them, basically, as a as a protest, and instead of burning some of them, they would send them here to Detroit. We never knew what we were gonna get from one year to the next. So when you see the group here, we have Keystone Cops, we have clowns, we have all kinds of different things. We have animals, we have bugs, we have different heads of different famous people. Um, some, we, do, we now make them all here in-house. So everything for the last 10, 15 years or so, we've made right here. And each year we do a new head. Last year was Gordie Howe. The year before that we did Sparky Anderson. This year we haven't unveiled that one yet, um, but he'll be out and about pretty soon, three weeks actually from today. Here at the Parade Company, we make everything. Every float you see, every prop you see, everything in the parade besides the bands and the people, of course, done right here by our amazing, amazing team at the Parade Company. Dave uh, Danielson is our art director. And as the projects come in and the sponsorships and the float designs, he brings in graduates from CCS, Wayne State, Michigan State, uh, to work on these various projects, all freelance. And the really, really cool thing is we're becoming a very strong year-round production house. Am I going to make them the same way I made the big ones? Yeah, they're a little different. Same like a little hot yeah. dog design, but they just need the little... And they also got to fit in there, so you can have yeah. them like be lower on the bottom and taper up. Uh -huh. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Brian. Brian. You want us to break those walls down as well? The ones yep. That took off? Yep. Everything. Take them right down. Tear everything down to nothing. Cool. This is a dome for the. It's kind of a, represents sort of like a a world esque electrical dome for the Lear float. I don't know if everybody knows this, but uh, Thanksgiving parade in Detroit is a world class parade. It's um, one of the best in the world. It's the second largest on Thanksgiving and one of the largest parades in America. Uh, we all believe that we build the best floats and we have, it's one of the biggest spectacles to see on TV on Thanksgiving morning. In a lot of ways, uh, we might not have the money that uh, Macy's Parade has, but um, I think it's more entertaining. Get on our website, uh, www.theparade.org uh, and um, take a tour. Take a tour of the studio, see the floats up close. Um, learn a little history about the place and and it's really cool because people come down down here and they would never expect to see this place in this old factory in the middle of Detroit and it's a uh, it's like kind of like walking into Wonderland when you come through the door. I'm sitting in front of Hitsville USA it's a replica of the Motown Museum but as I sit on this stoop it feels just like it did when I sat on the stoop on Grand Boulevard I just wanted you to get a chance to see the parade company through my eyes and through the citizens eyes of Detroit Come on down, take a tour, and see what you think. I'm Joe Darby with City Passport. I'll see you next time.
saw you try to walk away. Lions fans, come on, hi, talk to me. You guys are going to the game? We are going to the game. All right, did you have fun tailgating? What did you do all morning? We did, we tailgated, yes. Is this a tradition? Do you come down every week? No, a lot of the girls, this is, well, he has season tickets. He's a true Lions fan. All right. But these girls, this is their first Lions game. Well, and they're camera shy. I don't know why they're I don't know why they're hiding from over there, but that's okay. We'll talk to you guys. So you do tailgate all the time that you come to every game? Yes. Tell me what your tailgate consists of. It's different every time. Hot dogs, <laughs> nachos, Doritos. So is it? <laughs> that's your fourth meal. The that's stuff. the that's the, the important part. You know the good stuff. You got to hit the whole pyramid. Okay, so Hi guys, how's it going? You talk to us for a second. Sure. All right. So are you down here tailgating or just heading down to the game? Uh, tailgating, but now I'm heading to the game. Do you guys tailgate down here every week or every home game? I mean. Yes, we do. Yes, okay. we do. Is it a family tradition? You with friends? Tell me about what you do when you're tailgating out here. Uh, it's family. We got seven tickets. There's seven of us. Only four today, but there's seven of us, and we come to all the games. Uh -huh. We enjoy it. How many years have you been doing this? Uh, since '89. What? Well, it's down here since uh, what was it? 2002. That's longer uh, than I've been alive, you guys. Yeah, thanks. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that young. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You got the tent. You got the TVs. You have all the food, you have literally everything, and like this is this is die hard. So this is your tradition, and just like I know that the, the, the tradition is for the Lions to play every year on Thanksgiving. So do you look forward to that game every year? Oh yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely, definitely look forward to it. You know, uh, it's Lions pride. Any any part, any anyone that's a fan of the Detroit Lions, they know. You know, the Thanksgiving game is like one of the biggest games of the year. No matter who we play, no matter what the record are, you're going to be down here at the parade, you're going to be tailgating, and if you're going to the game, you're going to be at the game. Now, do you get a hard time from your family because, you know, they may creep into Thanksgiving dinner time going to the game, but that's secondary to the Lions playing, right? Yeah, Lions is priority, family is secondary when it comes, with the exception of this only on Thanksgiving. And you know what? I, I'm. You, I'm just here at the Lions game, no matter what. If I got to sit here by myself and eat my Thanksgiving dinner, I'm going to do it because I'm a Lions diehard fan. Thing, like a lot of the ladies would go. Like I would go to the game, my aunt would go to the game. Okay. And really, it was like maybe and then my cousin. The rest of the girls in the family really weren't into football, so they really would be like right, 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 right. Get, getting dinner ready. Exactly. <laughs> It's super cold down here and it's raining, but I have had a blast tailgating so far for the Lions at the Easter Market. I'm about to feed my face, watch this game, but I want you guys to stay tuned on this next piece for Detroit Classic, the tradition of the Lions playing on Thanksgiving Day. Girl, let's eat. <laughs> all right, all right. When you think of Thanksgiving, you think of football, turkey, family, and the Detroit Lions. See. No other team in professional sports can claim to be as much as part of an American holiday as the Detroit Lions when it comes to Thanksgiving football. The Thanksgiving tradition is older than 24 current NFL franchises, and Detroit's passion affair with the annual Thanksgiving Day game is evident by its growing popularity. Year after year, Detroiters look forward to not only spending Thanksgiving with their families, but they also enjoy sharing that time with the Lions. The game was the brainchild of G.A. Richards, the first owner of the Detroit Lions. Richards had purchased the team in 1934 and moved the club from Portsmouth, Ohio to the Motor City. The Lions were the new kids in town and had taken a back seat to the Detroit Tigers. Despite the fact that the Lions had lost only one game prior to Thanksgiving in 1934, the season's largest crowd had been just 15,000. The opponents that day, in 1934 was the undefeated defending world champion Chicago Bears led by George Hallis. The game would determine the champion of the Western Division. Richards had convinced the NBC radio network to carry the game coast to coast over 94 stations and additionally an estimated 26,000 fans jammed into the University of Detroit Stadium where thousands more disappointed fans were turned away. Despite two Ace Gutowski touchdowns, the Bears won the inaugural game 19-16, but a tradition was born. Since 1934, 69 games have been played with the Lions having a series record of 33-34-2, and, and each game in its own way continues to bring back memories of Thanksgiving, not only to Lions fans, but to football fans across the world.
It's time to come together, Detroit. This is our house, Lions fans. Let's make some noise. Come on, Lions fans. I can't hear you. Go Lions! On Thanksgiving Day, all the focus is on the three Fs. Food, family, and football. In Detroit, the football part has even more meaning. Every year, people from all over Michigan get together with their loved ones to see their home team take part in the NFL's Thanksgiving Classic. Over the years, the Detroit Lions have left us with exciting victories. A second down for the Lions. A second down and four, and Craig hands to Barry Sanders. And heartbreaking losses. Touchdown to tied it with no time left on the clock. Murray's kick, fielded by Williams at the five. Williams breaks out of the pack. Williams to the 30. Touchdown, Chicago. Each one leaving great memories to share with those closest to us. My most memorable moment with the Lions on Thanksgiving, I can't forget the infamous coin flip. I mean, that stands out um, with Jerome Bettis. You know, that was memorable with him being from Detroit and uh, playing in that game. <laughs> A Detroit posse clears the path for Hopalong Cassidy, and the chase is on. Hopalong hops along for 57 yards before the Colts can corral him. Diehard Lion fans since 1963, and followed them every every year since. But. Uh, in essence, I started out back with the uh, Lions when they originally played at the Detroit Tigers Stadium at that particular time. At one time, it was Briggs Stadium, but I think in the mid-60s, it, uh, it turned to, we got renamed Tiger Stadium after the uh, ownership uh, transitioned over to John Fetzer. But in any event, yeah, I used to attend the games there at the old Tiger Stadium where everything of course, were outdoors, uh, frigid temperatures. I remember going to Thanksgiving Day games, two of them, one in particular, where my feet uh, were pretty much frostbitten because, in essence, I went out there with some old uh, 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 thin socks, and in essence, the stadium was, of course, wide open being outdoors, and. Uh, and I'm sitting there the whole game. I was even there pre-game, and my feet pretty much froze, okay, by watching the Lions. But the Lions had Lem Barney and Mel Farr on those teams. Greg Landry was the quarterback. Um, and they uh, were playing against the Rosie Greers, and the, uh, they were playing against the Roman Gabriel, who was the actual quarterback for the Los Angeles Rams back then. I remember that game vividly, like it was yesterday. So, uh, Again, been following them a long, long time, and it's, it's really refreshing to see where they are uh, right now at six and two. I mean, uh, in first place, competing uh, for possibility of uh, of being uh, in the playoffs and being seated uh, as a as a uh, as a playoff contender. Brady has hit now ten straight throws and another touchdown. His fourth of the game, and it goes to Walker for the second time today. Julian Edelman threw a block. He comes over, congratulates Welker. Losing to the New England Patriots and Tom Brady. And that was a depressing day because uh, Tom came home and killed us. We didn't have a good team back then. So uh, we was hoping for a win to salvage, leave something out the season. By 9 a.m., the tailgating is drawing and the Lions fans are in for quite a tailgating party before, during, and after their team game in downtown Detroit. On Thanksgiving, this is one of the busiest sports days in the city's history. One of the most popular places to tailgate is the parking lot at Detroit's Eastern Market, located on Russell Street. Oh, wow, and this is from the Detroit tailgate, is that right? Yep. What, what's inside here? Well, I, got, I got six turkeys inside on a rotisserie. Uh -huh. This year we're ranging, we got, we got 19 down to 14 pounds. Wow. 
1972 Dodge Draft Cone? 72. That's 1972. That's 40 years old now. He didn't I know his parents partied oh. the way they do <laughs> until like a I got to give him credit ago. though. They were very civil until I was out of high school. Once I was out of high school, these people cut loose. They got season tickets for the Lions. They started coming down here. I was like, where were you my whole life? Tell me about the best parts about the Thanksgiving Day tailgate. We ain't got to be in mom's house to get turkey, all right? It's Thanksgiving Day and we know how to cook too. You know, you know I, I, I think I like the breakfast. I like coming down here early in the morning. I don't get out much with my mom and stepdad. I live three or four hours from here, so I don't see them very often. The Lions! Woo! Everybody calls Thanksgiving a holiday. Yeah. For us, it's always been Christmas. My mother was three hundred years old. I haven't seen her on Thanksgiving in 20 years. You don't like it very much, do you? I'm here. <laughs> That's the difference. Thousands of fans are expected to enjoy all the tailgating that Eastern Market has to offer. Food and camaraderie are a huge part of one of the Lions fans' favorites and personal pastimes. One of the rules about being commissioner is always being relaxed before the game. So, remember, when hot tubbing in Detroit, it's always before the meal and it's always before the game because then you can totally relax. Let's go Lions! From turkey with all the fixings to hot tubs, fans are reminded of the ultimate football holiday experience on Thanksgiving Day, spending quality time with friends and family. My little brother, he was an avid football fan, my older brother. We would go out after the game on Thanksgiving. Sometimes it would have snow out there. We would play uh, football in the middle of the street in the snow, um, mimicking Billy Sims and different players at that time, uh, moves and just enjoying ourselves on Thanksgiving, just being out of school and enjoying the holiday. I normally sit at home with the family, you know, um, bring my mother over, bring her home, and we sit down with the family and eat turkey and watch the Lions play. Uh, Thanksgiving and football is a tradition in Detroit because we always get the Thanksgiving game, so it's almost like a tradition. If you're not at the game, you're watching the game. And this year it's worth watching the game because they're good. They might go to the playoffs. Ever since I was a kid, it was always wake up, watch the Lions, play football in the backyard and have family over, eat turkey. and. It's, a, it's an awesome thing for the Lions every year to be one of those teams to play on Thanksgiving. You get the publicity and have a national television game no matter what. And it's, it, it is, it's what it is, it's tradition. And to have the Lions you know, during the day and then you have the Cowboys at night every year, it's something that uh, I'm proud to say I'm from Detroit about. You know, the entire world, whether you like football or not on Thanksgiving, you're watching that football game because that's the only thing on is Lions football. My brother and I got the tattoo a couple of years ago and it's, it's a symbol as much as it is my love for the Lions because it's something that my brother and I got together uh, we'll always, you know, we're always going to be brothers and we're always going to love the Lions. So uh, it was a symbol that we got together. And believe me, we've gotten a lot of stuff about it. I don't know how many times people told me after a Lions loss, you know, do you know any tattoo removal guys? But no matter what, whether the 0 16 or Super Bowl champions, I will have a tattoo on me. When I think about Thanksgiving, I always think about Lions football games. I spent many years in, uh, I spent 20 years in California, but I was still a Lions fan and took a lot of ridicule and a lot of uh, abuse. Uh, for that, but I remember every year knowing on Thanksgiving that I was still going to be able to see the Lions and, and sat down at Thanksgiving dinner watching the Lions play. There's a lot of them. I, I've gone to the last five or six, I want to say, but I remember just growing up and watching Barry Sanders run and having the game, you know, going outside and pretending like I was Barry Sanders. I don't have a, a one that specifically, you know, sticks in my head, but watching Barry Sanders, it's, you know, I, you, everyone wanted to be Barry Sanders growing up. We start off the day usually trying to go to the Thanksgiving parade, because I have a daughter who was born on Thanksgiving Day. So she still wants to go to parade even though she's 20 years old. Then we come home, we finish up our dinner, and then we get prepared to have the family come over. And we usually have dinner and we have some type of devotion. 
and then if there's time, if the Lions are still playing, the game will come on. You know, having the Lions game on, it's great to see them winning and playing like they are now and some of the, the good players that they have. So I'm looking forward to watching that game this year and as well as getting Thanksgiving dinner ready and um, just like it's one of my favorite times of the year, um, being at home with my family, you know, the fall weather, football, and Thanksgiving all go hand in hand. I look forward to a win. I look forward to a win. They're having a great season so far. Uh, they're seven and two. Um, I just can't see them losing. Can't see them losing this year, not on Thanksgiving. This year, uh, it would definitely be cooking. My son is five years old now. Uh, his godfather actually retired from the Detroit Lions recently, so uh, it's going to be exciting to, you know, get him to actually watch Thanksgiving football with his dad and grandpa and all of that. So I look forward to that this year, him actually understanding what's going on, having been to a few Lions games, so it's going to be cool this year. Here in Detroit, we will be offering thanks to one additional event, Thanksgiving football. In the end, G.A. Richard's dream came true. The Lions, owned by the Ford family, currently reside in the football cathedral right next door to where the Tigers play. It's a far cry from 1934, although there was a positive omen from Richards all the way back then. You see, there's an old photo of a sports hero at an NBC microphone in Detroit, taken right after Richards brought the Lions to Michigan. The athlete is dressed in a suit jacket with his hair slicked back and shiny shoes on. The photo is addressed to the renegade Lions owner. It reads, to G.A. Richards, best of luck to your football club. This year, all Thanksgiving meals plans are going to have to wait until after the clock hits zero in Ford Field. For the people of Detroit, they finally have a team they can be excited about watching. For those unaware, it was the Detroit Lions who started the tradition of playing football on Thanksgiving Day back in 1934. That first Turkey Day game was between the Detroit Lions and the Chicago Bears. The Lions lost that game, but now, 78 years later, the tradition lives on across the nation. Once again, like so many things about Detroit, people forget that along with Motown music and the automobile, they have Detroit to thank for Thanksgiving football. Well, that's it for this week's episode of Detroit 360. I'm your host, Sheila Grant. Thanks so much for watching. Can I get in next? <laughs>